Welcome to episode 158 of Rebirth Revolution. My name is Melissa Olson. Well, we are digging our way out of the midterm election, and it is worth noting that there was no so-called red wave. So many of those who are paid to talk about such things had dire warnings leading up to the election. The blame and credit that will be bestowed on various individuals varies with each talking head. The major theme or takeaway suggested by some was that maybe we had less of an appetite for chaos. When I watch everything unfold around us, I try to look at things with the longer lens. The years leading up to our previous president, the four years of his term, and the hangover that we are still experiencing reminds me of a phase in my life when I was young and ridiculous. I was all about the chaos in my 20s. I hadn't come from chaos, but I had something in me that just made me love the wild life. I had something in my system that I needed to get out. Well, in my chaos phase, I couldn't think of anything but the next moment of drama and excitement. It was my life blood. When I was in that phase of life, I wasn't thinking about the future, and I wasn't someone you would want to go to if you needed wisdom or stability, but that phase didn't last forever. I settled in and became someone who was capable of providing stability for others. Looking back, I don't regret my chaotic years. They were just something that I had to do. There was something I had to get out of my system. Maybe as a country, we had just enough people who were in that chaotic phase of their lives, who drew into our existence this cast of characters who are outlandish to a cartoonish degree. The crazier it got, the happier they were, and the happier some of them still are. I enjoyed my chaos phase early, but it certainly isn't limited to any age group. I find myself wondering if people just want to feel something, feel anything. So many people live lives that are filled with drudgery and obligations which tends to leave a person feeling dulled and disengaged. The insanity of the previous president gave them reason to feel very big feelings. It also gave them reason to feel both aggrieved and superior. Feeling big feelings is definitely important when you want to go wild. But since the big party started, there have been some huge events that have required grown-up attention. We had to find our way out of a global pandemic. We have seen the Supreme Court strip women of their bodily autonomy. We have seen Putin try to take another country by force. This is all stuff that is meant to be handled once a person has sobered up and returned to reality. Maybe this election says that we are ready to return to reality. Maybe we are tired of the chaos and ready for the partying to end. Maybe we're moving on from the hangover phase. One can only hope. Let me tell you who I admire deeply today. I admire the young people who, apparently, are way less messy than I was at that age. There were college students that stood in line for many hours past the closing of the polls to vote. That is so admirable. They are really fighting for their futures. And it's pretty clear that someone was hoping they would give up and go home. But they didn't let voter suppression defeat them. They had their say. We adults are leaving them a world that is unworkable. 
we are making it almost impossible for them to live the lives that we had handed to us. Sure, we worked, but everything that we wanted and needed was within our reach. College was cheap. You could buy a $100 car and drive it for years. Apartments were cheap. Houses were affordable to most people. You were able to leave the job you worked at the end of the day, and no employer would assume that they had access to you 24-7. We had bodily autonomy. We had everything we needed to make the decisions about how our lives would be shaped. The young people now do not have all of that. We've priced them out of everything. We have made them work for criminally low wages. And we have stripped them of their bodily autonomy. Those on the right suggested prior to this midterm that they want to make abortion illegal on a federal level. They also wanted to get rid of Medicare and Social Security. There was also talk about outlawing contraceptives. It wasn't enough to make the young people's lives super difficult. They want to make them impossible. If the old people cannot receive the money that they have put into the system their entire working lives, who do you think that will affect most? The young people who will be forced to house and care for them. Yet another reason to not be able to achieve a reasonably comfortable life. If they get rid of contraceptives, who does that affect? The young people. Your life is not your own when you have no control over when and if you will bring another life into your world and onto your list of responsibilities. Young people can see that the rules are stacked against them. They can see that there is a small percentage of people who are protected and allowed to hoard resources and wealth and they will never be a part of that small percentage. They can't even get to the comfort that the average middle-class family enjoyed back in the day through working one union job. I'm sure they can't imagine how any household could live on one income, but that is how life used to work. I'm thrilled that the young people showed up for the fight I back them every step of the way. I hope they realize that they are the wall that stopped the supposed red wave. And I hope that they decide to use that power for all that it's worth. I want them to feel empowered. I think that the world that young people would come up with has to be better than the world that the baby boomers have left them where we have just accepted everything that has been done in the last half a century, the newer students in this school are less likely to do so. They are bold and bright and imaginative enough to deconstruct the world that they have been handed. While their parents or grandparents may be the ones at the rally spreading their stories about how JFK Jr., is really alive in coming back to be the Republican VP and that the current president is actually being held at Gitmo, these kids are not gullible chumps. They have had to grow up in a world where information was swirling around their heads constantly. They have developed some survival skills that their elders never did and probably never will. So they are my heroes right now. To the young people, I'm so glad that you are so much better than I was at your age. Sorry we've left you such a mess to clean up. Thanks for returning for another week of Rebirth Revolution. We can be found on all the podcast apps, the music apps, and full episodes play on our YouTube and Facebook pages. You can find all episodes on rebirthrevolution.com. 
please download, rate, and review whenever you can. Until next week, stay engaged, stay informed, and ask a young person what they want their future to look like. Truly listen, and then figure out how you can help them achieve that. Remember, you are loved exactly as much as every other person on the planet, not one ounce more or one ounce less. Stay strong and safe and responsible.